Twas the week after Christmas, and all through the land, Christmas videos were over, except for one man's. It's me. I'm, I'm the man. But hey, better late than never, right? There are a lot of iconic Nickelodeon shows, especially from the late 90s and early 2000s. And my Mount Rushmore would have Hey Arnold, Rocket Power, The Rugrats, and of course, Cat Dog. I can't quite describe the feeling I get when I watch this show, and when I hear that iconic theme song play, I, I can't help but smile. One fine day with a wolf and a purr, a baby was born and it caused a little stir. The first episode of Cat Dog aired in April of 1998, and the last in June of 2005, after a total of four seasons and 66 episodes. Definitely not enough episodes if you ask me. As of right now, I only have one cat dog video on my channel, and honestly, that's a shame. So for this video, we're going to be taking a look back at a very underrated Christmas special. A very cat dog Christmas. Oh, and did I forget to mention, I brought a friend along with me for the video. Stay tuned because you're not going to want to miss this one. The episode starts at a snowy cat dog's house. Cat dog are doing their yearly tradition of closing their eyes and putting their present under the tree. As dog does this, cat has his fingers crossed hoping for a sports car. Man, I don't know what world he's living in, but, you know, that'd be pretty cool. Then Dog tells Cat to do the same, and he closes his eyes. Ho, ho, ho. Now, if you've seen this show before, Cat not having a present for Dog really isn't a big surprise, but still can't help but feel bad for Dog. Just then, Dog remembers his favorite tradition of going down to the mall to meet Santa. They burst through the door and slide all the way down to the Mall of Malls. After flying through the air and landing directly on Santa's lap, Dog is asked what he wants for Christmas. Something expensive with a death ray, right? Golly, no! <laughs> all I want for Christmas is... I hope Cat likes my present. Why, that's a pure and wonderful Christmas wish. And when Cat's asked what he wants for Christmas, well... He... He's not so nice. <clears throat> I want a sports car, cherry red with five on the floor and a catalytic converter. Like how in the world does he think Dog could afford a sports car? If you've seen this show, then you know they're not exactly wealthy. As Cat Dog start to leave, we see Rancid Rabbit walking up with his niece, Rancine, to go meet Santa Claus. When she's asked what she wants for Christmas, well, she replies, Get real, you dime store phony! Uncle Rancid! She then sees Cat Dog from a distance and decides that that's what she wants. Cat Dog. She wants to own Cat Dog. And then Rancid Rabbit actually has the gall to go ask Cat Dog what their price is. But of course, that's insane. Are you out of your mind? Then they walk off just feeling totally insulted. Well, at least there's a glimmer of Christmas spirit left. I want the Cat Dog! Okay, so it's a very faint glimmer. Later, the Greasers show up to the mall, apparently doing some Christmas shopping themselves. They spot Cat Dog and chase after them to quote, deck the halls, unquote. But Cat Dog manages to avoid them by hiding in the top of the mall's Christmas tree. Just then, Winslow pops out of the top of the tree and has a chat with Cat. But all Cat can talk about is this imaginary sports car that he hopes Dog gets him for Christmas. He tells Winslow that the box Dog got him looks like a sports car key box, but Winslow tells him he's never getting that for Christmas. And also, what is a sports car key box? <laughs> what? That box was kind of shaped like a sports car key. What a nuts. He then goes off to tell Dog that Cat never actually likes the presents that he gives him, and that he'll only ever have a Merry Christmas if he gets Cat a sports car. Side note, I love how Winslow is just always trying to stir the pot. Dog doesn't believe Winslow and tells him that Cat loves all the presents that he gets him. And then this. Oh yeah? Then why does he always throw him away? Alright, I'm not gonna lie, that broke my heart a little bit. This all has Cat believing that their Christmases are terrible because they don't have enough stuff. He goes on this whole rant about how everybody has these fancy things like video games and solid gold toaster ovens. <laughs> I ain't ever met anybody with a solid gold anything, let alone a toaster. While feeling depressed, Cat convinces Dog to take Rancid up on his offer, saying they'll be Rancine's present if he gives them access to everything in his mansion. The next scene, we see Santa witness this turn of events and is highly upset with the choice Cat Dog made. He says Christmas doesn't seem to make anyone happy anymore, and he decides that maybe the world would be better off without it. What Cat Dog did was the final straw. Christmas is cancelled forever! All 
All right, with that dramatic scene that just happened, I see no better time to toss it over to my friend, the Night Butterfly. Take it away, dude. Hey, I was in a box. Thank you so much for letting me be on your channel. It really means a lot. So let's dive into this. Upon seeing the news of Santa canceling Christmas and CatDog being at fault, Winsler, the Greasers, and Eddie the Squirrel are outraged and begin to form an angry mob. Where's CatDog? I wish I knew the bums. Meanwhile, CatDog is stuffed in a box, waiting to be opened by Rancine, and they are completely oblivious to the fact that they caused Santa to cancel Christmas. When Rancine finds CatDog is the only Christmas present she has under the tree, she says she's got totally ripped off, so CatDog better be good. As Rancine holds a tea party with Dog, of course, Cat tries out one of Rancine's cars, eventually skidding to a stop when Dog wants to hug the Christmas tree. Dog notices the tree smells like metal, and the two find themselves missing their old Christmas tree and all the traditions they've shared. Hey Cat, Christmas isn't supposed to smell like sweaty metal. Yeah. I miss our tree, and I miss our other traditions too, even if you think they're stupid. Cat then surprisingly admits he made a mistake, and they all go and tell Rancine. But when they tell her that they're leaving, she refuses to let them go. She tells them the last guy who tried to break a deal with her was made into a coffee table, like damn. A guy tried to Welsh on a deal with me once. I need a coffee table out of his shin bones. Nice workmanship. She proceeds to throw a cat dog into what looks like a giant bed cage and leaves. We get this quick scene of a big angry mob searching for cat dog and then we're right back to the bed cage. They get Rancine to come back by pretending that dog is sick. We've got one sick puppy on our hands! Oh man! Why do all my toys break on Christmas Day? And when she climbs back up the cage, they escape, leaving her in the cage. Well, this seems like a great place to pass it on back over to you, Box. I just want to say again, thank you for letting me be in this video. If anyone's interested, my channel is The Night Butterfly. I'm pretty sure that box will link it in the description, right? But anyway, thank you for letting me be on the video. Yo, thank you so much, Butterfly, for being on the video. And of course, go check this guy's channel out. Link will definitely be in the description. The dude is such a good guy, I cannot recommend his channel enough. But all right, back on track. After sneaking through the mansion, they end up finding a window that's wide open. Unfortunately, it's this one random window that's wide open at the very top of these extremely high walls. Cat wraps his scarf around a chandelier and they swing out the window. Alright, well they do end up escaping through the unlocked door. I'm telling you guys, no matter how much you want to believe Cat's the smart one, Dog is definitely the smart one. Cat Dog arrives home only to find that all of their Christmas decorations have disappeared. To make matters worse, the Greasers, Eddie, and Winslow show up. They tell Cat Dog that they're the reasons that Christmas was cancelled, and they're clearly feeling guilty. And now we're gonna pound you! But right before they get pounded by the Greasers, Rancid and Rancine show up, saying they get to attack first since Cat Dog is their property. Cat begins the breakdown, saying that it's his fault and he's so sorry that he sold himself for Christmas, but this does very little to stop the mob. But then Dog steps in. Stop! You got this all wrong! We can still have Christmas! Look! Dog continues one of their Christmas traditions by recreating his and Cat's double tree by piling a bunch of junk together. The others aren't quite convinced at first, but finally come to understand things when the moon shines brightly on the trees. It's beautiful! Ah, it's warmy! She's Louise! It's Christmas! Cat Dog's right. I guess we are family, sorta. And they all share a heartfelt group hug. Santa then walks through the door, having seen their display of Christmas spirit, and forgives Cat Dog. He says that Dog has shown that the spirit of Christmas is alive and well, and brings Christmas back. Afterwards, Cat and Dog exchange their presents, Cat getting a houseboat made of popsicle sticks and Dog getting a bar of soap. Oh, a houseboat made out of popsicle sticks, that's, boy, that's just what I always wanted. I knew it! A bar of soap! Yeah. 
and then they all start to sing this fantastic Christmas song while Santa takes off into the sky, with Cat Dog guiding the sleigh. Hey Cat, I can see our house from here! No, just get us down in one piece, Rudolph! Garbage truck, garbage truck, garbage truck, garbage truck! Dog, no! Oh, oh, oh! And that was a very cat dog Christmas. I really enjoyed this one, but I do have to say I hate the way that dog is treated in this episode. Or I mean I guess the majority of all the episodes for that matter. My guy is just an ADHD ball of joy and everyone else just wants to bring him down. But now I get it, cats and dogs generally have very different personalities and them being so different make the show great and I don't remember where I was going with this, but um, yeah, anyway. I do kind of wish that Rancine would have got her um, just desserts here for being a complete brat the entire episode and also keeping Cat Dog against their will. But hey, I get it. It's a Christmas episode. It's got to end on a happy note. Plus, the song everybody sung at the end was a banger. So the majority of you guys know the voice of Cat is Tom Kenny, aka the voice of Spongebob Squarepants. Something cool about this episode is Santa Claus is voiced by Brian Doyle Murphy, who also voiced the Flying Dutchman. So that's pretty cool. And actually while I was doing some research on the episode, I noticed something. There are so many popular voice actors in this show. I mean we got Jim Cummings, the voice of Cat, but also the voice of Winnie the Pooh and my favorite Darkwing Duck, and Tom Kenny of course, Cat and also Spongebob Squarepants. Carlos, I'll, I cannot pronounce his name, so I'm not going to try, but he's the dude from Reno 911 and also the voice of Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life, and Mr. Crocker from The Fairly Odd Parents. Uh, we also have Maria Bamford, who voices a ton of people in Adventure Time, and we also have someone who I actually really admire, Billy West. He's the voice of Fry from Futurama, the voice of Ren and Stimpy, Doug, and tons more. Come to think of it, I'm not sure why I haven't made a Futurama video yet, so I'll watch out for that. Okay, so I might have went a little overboard on all that, but I just find it super interesting that I never noticed all of these legends in the same show before. Anyway, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I just really want to say thanks to the Night Butterfly again for being a part of it. He has really helped me get started here on YouTube, and if you're not already, you should really go check out this guy's channel. Well, that's going to do it for me, and until next time guys, peace. One fine day with a wolf and a fur, a baby was born and it caused a little stir. No blue buzzard, no three. The best part of Christmas is being together, sharing the good times and singing a song.